it's not who you know, it's who knows you. Well, we're going to look at a promise related to that today. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we are looking at things that God has prepared for those who love him. And it's these things that the spiritual believer can evaluate and say, there's value in these things, value in these truths. I'm Pastor Tim Holscher, and we're looking at the ministry of the Spirit in believers, specifically the ministry of regeneration and the ministry in which he gives us the mind of Christ, the ability to look at the Word of God, see what it plainly says, and appreciate what it says, and appreciate its value, even value perhaps in things that are not specifically for us, but in this context, specifically for those things, value of those things that God has. It says you're prepared for those who love him, and that's are loving him, the ones that are loving him at that moment in time. In other words, at the moment that you are spiritual and you're using this love that the Spirit produces and you are loving God while you're doing that, there's things God's prepared for you that you get to enjoy. We looked at a couple yesterday, but we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. We're going to look at a little issue. This comes up in a couple different places in the New Testament, but this is one of them. And he says, verse 1, and he, Paul is answering some, apparently some questions that have been given to him by people that have come from Corinth, some believers that have come from Corinth. So he says, now concerning foods sacrificed to idols or things sacrificed to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. In other words, everybody has some knowledge. And this isn't just knowledge about, it's some experiential knowledge. So everybody has some experiential knowledge with various things, whatever that might be. And for the city of Corinth and in their world, pretty much everywhere you went, there were people that had knowledge of the idols and their temples and the sacrificial systems, even if they had never been involved with them. Even if they were like Paul, were a good Jew and had never participated, they had experiential knowledge with it. They'd seen it. They'd witnessed all of this. It was there. But he says, but knowledge, same word now that he's going to use here, but knowledge makes one conceited or puffs one up. In other words, you can take that experiential knowledge as a believer. And Paul eventually is going to tell these believers in chapter 10, you know, an idol is nothing of itself. It really isn't anything. Yeah, there are, there are demons that stand behind those idols. They take worship as though they're gods, but they're not real gods. And the idol then is nothing. But a person can have that knowledge and it can make him puffed up and he can say, oh, I've got a lot of experience with this and I know these things and I, it's not going to affect me. And he can just kind of run roughshod then over believers that aren't there. He says, but love edifies. Love edifies. Or to use maybe just a very simple modern word, it, word, it builds up. It builds people up, just like putting up a structure. And the more the structure goes up, the more stable the structure becomes. He says, knowledge can make one conceited or puffed up, but love edifies. In other words, what he starts off with right out the gate is you can have knowledge and you maybe are those people that you know that idols are nothing. You got this all settled. You're not worried about it and you're going to eat whatever you want. And Paul said, yeah, you could do that even. But he says, but love edifies. Love actually looks out for people. And so he says in verse 2, if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he is not yet known as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by him. He says, God knows believers that actually are loving God. And they're loving God by doing what? Putting believers before themselves and before what they want and before what they can do. And we have a similar statement in 1 John chapter 2, verse 10. It says, the one who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause of stumbling in him. In other words, if you really are loving your brother, you're going to be living carefully so you do not trip your brother up, so you do not stumble your brother. You are more concerned about him. And he says, that is a person that is known by God. Imagine what that is to say, I'm known by God. I'm recognized by God because I'm actually living out God's kind of love. 
And that's an amazing privilege that we get. And if you put a brother first, I can guarantee you, it's one of those things where knowing that you're living out, you're getting to know God, and God knows you in a special way, that it's going to encourage you to have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me.